Hello and welcome back to Hadoop Exam Learning Resources. In this session, we will discuss about the second part of tactical design. Those are domain objects. So in this, we are having these three things here, like value objects, entity, entities, and aggregate groups, which which we will discuss each one by one. So let's start with the value object first. What exactly it means here? Value object when you create an object, it's like plain uh, old Java object. Uh, you can say uh, in Java if you are working it so then this is called plain old Java object so uh, the, the value object is basically a uh, immutable once it is created you cannot change it so that is why they are thread safe so I'll not go in detail you need to understand what is the mute immutable this is a basic concept when you work with the object oriented and multi threading so uh, then uh, immutable object are always thread safe like in Java string is an immutable object correct so this is a thread safe they have no identity or ID and do not care about the uniqueness. So they don't care about the uniqueness. What does it mean? I'll tell you in few minutes. Two value objects are considered equal if they have the same type and same attribute here. So here you see like uh, these two address objects, uh, value objects, you can see both are having exactly same value. There is no unique identifier or anything. So that's why both are the equal they are considered equal so their uh, uh, equals method uh, should be implemented by comparing the values for this and uh, so that's why it would be considered but if there uh, any value of here like you see flat number in this ob address object is changing in value object it means this is a different object altogether it's not the same anymore so that is why uh, this is a value object some benefit of the value object you can uh, see here basically the compound of value object can swallow lots of the computational complexity because it can hold the business logic as well and it can <coughs> sorry uh, computational logic it can have entities can be released from the logic of complexity i'll talk about uh, entities separately because this is a second next moving we are talking about but uh, value object can hold the business logic so entities can be relieved from the putting the business logic uh, improve extensibility especially for testability and concurrency issues if using correctly because these are immutable so they don't create a uh, issues in multi-threading application and it can be easily tested uh, kind of thing value object can have a business logic like what i mean business logic like some calculations or something some business logic you want to implement here like uh, based on the zip code if you want to derive uh, or validate like city is a correct or not correct so this business logic if you want to put in the value object you can put it and find it out basically correct or uh, so this kind of business message in reactive systems are implemented as value object as we discussed reactive system in previous session so if uh, messages can be implemented as a value object if required correct so like you pass the message from here to here here to here here to here so the, those can be implemented uh, as a value object as well so java string is a value object or not uh, so if you i'm not sure how much you are aware or not but java has a string as an immutable object and a string does not have its own uh, identity or something the value inside that let's say this is an hadoop is a value in the string and this is a, another string object which is a hadoop as a value correct so both are considered equal because their values is e exactly same correct so that is what the uh, it means but uh, so that is why this is called a value object and uh, yes it is a general purpose value object which is quite has a quite good amount of business logic what is the business logic string has a like a lot of methods are implemented in the string class of the java correct you remember so like replace is there or uh, reverse is there so these are all methods these are all business logic which is implemented in the value object of the string so that is a generic purpose so suppose in your uh, code if you have to implement an email uh, as a value so should you define string email uh, in your class you should avoid doing this correct rather create email as a separate value object uh, because you wanted to put a lot of business logic for email which e string by default is not providing so uh, for example suppose if you are creating a class correct so let's say uh, for example let's say address class you are creating it uh, i'm saying and in that if you define string as an email correct this is one value and ct uh, is uh, sorry string ct correct so this you implemented now in this class you want to validate your email address is in correct format or not so you would implement validate email method let's say uh, which 
is exactly not responsibility of this class why unnecessarily you are putting this logic in the address class which is uh, so what you should ideally do in this situation you create a separate class email and in this uh, basically whatever uh, now a string you can put it or whatever your email id or something and this class responsibility to validate uh, email method logic correct basically so that is what you can function you can implement it so instead of string class you should use the email class here inside the address and you can have an email as an attribute so that is what it means you should always uh, have this kind of implementation in place uh, rather than directly having the string class so that is what uh, it means uh, value object uh, here what we were discussing now let's move to the entities entities and value objects are uh, you can see are uh, quite different because in entity you must have an identifier so like this is an id customer id this is our employee class as an employee id correct so similarly so this id remains same then these are considered to equal object because my mobile number changes like previously this is my mobile number i have updated this my mobile number so it does not mean like because my identity is not changing it means that this this these represent both represent the same customer object but as soon as my identity changes then this is a different object correct so this is what entities are immute uh, sorry mutable they can change and uh, their identity matters so in value object we don't have an identity in entities we have an identity so you know how to uh, understand this it, it is mutable so they are not threads if two entities have the same id they are considered equal even their attributes are different state of the entity can change and any time and even if id remain the same with other entity it is considered same and entity can change its attributes but it cannot change its identity if identity change then it is a new identity altogether entity can have a business logic as we have discussed this value object can also have a business logic entity can also have a business logic in reactive system like actor framework actors are created using the entity uh, if you are not in later or i need to create an entirely new training for actor framework this is very popular framework um, so that you can use it in a, especially in a reactive system can be built using the active framework so that will create a separate training for that entity is a single source of truth uh, so any information you need it you get from the entity entity is generally persisted as a row in the database like you create a customer table and in that uh, for each customer you have an id column which is and then uh, name address whatever you want to save it basically address can be a different uh, value object uh, and you can use it uh, with the join and kind of thing so that is what the entities entities can have a business logic as well so basically idea is while you're doing the domain driven design you need to once you have strategically defined your tool so you need to find it out what i can define as a value object in my uh, system what should be my uh, entities in the system i should create and what should be i creating a the third thing which is uh, called uh, a sorry uh, aggregate roots i'll discuss next uh, aggregate root correct so that is what we need to identify what does it mean aggregate root uh, like let's say this is a customer class correct you created a customer it has an address it has a name uh, it has a phone correct so what as i suggested correct so you create a customer class and rather than uh, a string address you use it you use address uh, inside this and address you can create it as an attribute or uh, then phone another class you create it and you can use it uh, phone here and similarly a uh, name you can create it and use a name so that way uh, you would have a aggregate root and uh, aggregate root means like uh, all are related if uh, my name changes correct so then basically actual customer is changing if my address changes then actual customers i is being like impacted correct uh, basically so and phone changes to this customer so anything which i need to change for the customer goes via customer then uh, this would be an aggregate here so customer is called an aggregate because this is this three anything i need to change here i need to go via customer so an aggregate is a collection of domain objects correct bound to a root entity so here customer is a my root entity and root entity is called the aggregate root here it is always an entity remember the entity we have discussed correct so basically aggregate is what it's a it's a collection of entities okay remember these are collection of the entities uh, which but they have a single root in that here address phone name 
so all are entities and they have a basically customer as a root for them because every customer has an address phone and name correct so we, we define this so you need to create an aggregate uh, in your uh, bounded context access to objects in the aggregate must go through an aggregate route only transactions should not span multiple aggregate routes like uh, generally uh, when you're uh, uh, some transaction is happening correct you want to uh, update an address okay for a customer so it should not go by a multiple route uh, multiple aggregate route only one aggregate route should be followed here and then address should be updated if you are uh, uh, going through multiple aggregate route means something wrong with your designing when your transaction span across multiple aggregate route transactions should not span multiple aggregate routes aggregates are good candidate for distribute distribution in a reactive system yeah, it is a very common you can see a single aggregate route in a single bounded context generally but that is not always the case uh, so it is not anyone in fact it is not necessary so aggregate uh, is here some couple of example more so order is here and when i define an order i can have a different kind of order in my system like wage order jane order and alcoholic order correct so this is three order so any order related information i need to change i need to go via aggregate route here order customer is an another we have discussed correct i need to change address then it goes to go but if i need to change the address i don't have to go through order and customer both correct only customer route so that is my pure uh, aggregate route defined here basically correct and this is in a one context it could be in another context it could be uh, may not necessary but that can be possible correct so how do you find the aggregate uh, route you can use the below question to find out whether uh, it, this entity is an aggregate route or not correct is the entity involved in the most operation in that bounded context if my like when i'm working with a bounded context and always i see like this entity is coming into the picture for doing every uh, command queries or uh, events or anything happening so this is this entity is always coming in picture so that can be a possibly uh, your aggregate uh, route in that context if you delete the entity does it require to delete the other entities if that is the case if you delete this customer entity then you need to delete the address entity as well then certainly this is a uh, let me write it clearly customer entity if you have in your bounded context and this is an address entity correct so if i delete this customer from my system then i don't want to hold this address for this uh, you a customer as well then this is the this is this can be a aggregate route here because this is a or uh, dependency you can clearly see will a single transaction spin multiple entity that that is all. so that is the some a way to identify this entity is an aggregate route or not that is what you need to find it out so aggregate route is nothing an entity which uh, basically a uh, part of multiple uh, when transaction happens so the all transactions should go via this aggregate so that is what aggregate route is domain so some point you need to remember regarding till now whatever we learned so domain events are fired to be an eventual eventually consistent what does it mean like change the address correct so if you are updating so my system eventually consistent like it may not be immediate but my once i might change this address it should be updated when you work with one to many or many to one you basically work with the aggregate routes uh, this is an one another way to identify whether this is an aggregate route or an aggregate is a collection of entities we discuss and values which comes under a single transaction boundary an aggregate controls the change like every change has to go via aggregate route an aggregate always has a root entity this is what we discuss here of the root entity governs the lifetime of the other entities in the aggregate if i delete customer i need to delete the address as well correct so if it has a phone as well then i need to delete the phone as well so that is what the life cycle of the address and phone is governed by this aggregate entity uh, is always consistent domain events are generated to ensure eventual consistency like once you update the address new event would be generated and the system would be uh, uh, basically eventually consistent once the event is updated in the system so that is what the aggregate rules so now as part of uh, this domain driven design it is your responsibility to clearly identify the uh, or value object entities and aggregate routes another important concept which i want to cover here is like a, uh, which uh, especially when you have experience you would have come across the value object dto and entity as well and dto mostly or data transfer object people uh, understand is and they say like all three are equal or something generally there is a confusion exist uh, people who don't know so let me explain you what this uh, 
how they differ is data transfer object uh, is a different it holds only data and no business logic at all so it's a getter and setter method that's all like employee class there is no business logic if you want to put it then this is a plain data transfer object first name last name and and it, that's all uh, basically for example and that become the only have getter and setter method that's all so dto is immutable obviously thread safe usually we use the dto transfer to object between layers and tiers in one single application or between then jvm to jvm if you want to transfer like from this jvm to this jvm if you want to transfer the data then you use the dto right this does not have a business logic or anything just serialization would be done and transferred over from this jvm to this jvm would be done that's all value object is immutable same as a dto but it contains a logic business logic correct it can have a some like string class we discussed correct so a string class can have a replace method or reverse method or this kind of method it can have so this can have a business logic so the difference between dto and a value object is dto does not have a business logic value object has a business logic okay and but rest all things are same entity is a uh, like we have discussed must have an id correct entity has a data or attribute similar to other uh, but it must have an id entity is a mutable correct so it can change so this is not thread safe entity has a logic similar to other uh, uh, value object but not as a data so these are the three different these are the differences between um, dto value object and entity you must remember that and you need to identify while domain driven design you work you need to identify what are my value object what are my entity uh, entity correct all three are is plain old java object only uh, but uh, uh, but the, the difference exists here correct so that is what about the domain uh, objects we have learned so now domain activities we have completed domain objects we have completed so as part of domain driven design you should be able to find out what should be in my domain this uh, uh, six things now and uh, in next session we'll cover the domain abstraction so that's all in this session thanks thanks for watching and i hope you like this session if you are watching on youtube don't forget to subscribing i'm stopping now thank you